Hey gang, this is Jen hopping into your earbuds to let you know that this episode is a special replay of a fan favorite, Comparison, The Thief of Joy. If you've heard it already, that's okay. You probably need to hear it again. I know it did me good to give it a listen. Enjoy. And we'll be back in a couple weeks with a special episode that has Q&A from the latest role model camp. Stay tuned. Welcome to Beauty and the Gee, the podcast about jujitsu and life from the female perspective. I think that is the first time that I've ever said that right on the very first take. Excellent job. But I think we'll still probably have some outtakes at the very <laughs> end for people to listen to. Yeah. So if you aren't sticking, if you aren't sticking there with us through the very <laughs> end, see, you need to be doing that. You never know what you might miss. <laughs> What are we talking about? You didn't introduce yourself. Oh, God. See, there we go. Okay. I'm Jen Eads. I am a white belt full of curiosity and questions about all things jujitsu. And I also make podcasts. Yes, you do. I'm AJ Klingerman. I'm a purple belt in Brazilian jujitsu. And I'm obsessed with jujitsu as a whole. Uh, (laughs) And I run the Role Model Women's Only Grappling Camp. And stay tuned because there are announcements coming soon about who's going to be there this year. Yes. Super excited. There's going to be so many announcements. There's so many things we have planned. Um, I think I have the schedule finalized, which is a crazy person thing to do since it's still, you know, several months away. Right. But I just I just have to be able to picture it. I want to know that everything's going to go exactly how I want it to. (laughs) You know what else we need to talk about? What? We have a Facebook group now. We do. Uh, the Beauty yeah. and the Gee Gang. Yeah. Look like it, it up. Join us. Join us for sure. Because Invite your friends. We'll continue conversations over there that start on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. So, very All good. Right. What are we talking about today? We are talking about comparison is the thief of joy. And who said that? Theodore Roosevelt. Podcasting is very educational. It's very educational. He said a lot of great stuff. He did. Just ask Brene. Yeah. If you don't know who Brene Brown is, look her up. You're going to learn all kinds of stuff. (laughs) Exactly. Look up her Theodore Roosevelt quote. Yes. And uh, her thing on Netflix. Have you watched her? Yes. Oh my gosh. It was so good. Yeah. I kind of (laughs) obsess about listening to all the podcasts that she's been on. Yes. Yeah. Because I'd I'd rather listen to her than read her books. I haven't read any of her books. Yeah. My heart wants to, but I haven't. She's better. It's better to hear her talk about it. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. I wish she would do a podcast. I do too. Be like, girl, come on. Right? Come on, beauty and the gay Brene. We're in the other arena all the dang time. (laughs) (laughs) Give it to me. I want it. Every (laughs) day. But yeah, I was thinking a lot about uh, just, it happened a lot at camp, right? So I went to the Origin Immersion Camp and kind of seeing things happening there um, with people comparing themselves to others. I see it a lot when people get promoted. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really rough when someone gets promoted. Is it? Like, I just feel excited. I know. Maybe because I'm just still new into it. I'm not saying it's rough for me. I'm saying I see a lot. And I'm not saying it's never been. Like, I've definitely, you know, had someone get promoted or be higher ranked than me, Mm -hmm. faster than me or whatever. And there's just kind of that little bit of like, almost a gut punch where you're just like, oh, what am I doing wrong? Right. That makes sense. Totally. Yeah. So- it is. It it can be hard. And I see it happen a lot, especially um, like that white to blue. I feel mm-hmm. like white to blue is the biggest one where you see your friend get promoted to blue belt and you're just like, well, why does she deserve a blue belt? Why don't I deserve my blue belt? You know, like <laughs> it's just hard to not compare yourself. Right. So first, let's talk about the pillars. OK, so James, who is our head coach, mm-hmm. um, he grades, I guess, is the best way to put it off of four main pillars and two secondary pillars. And those pillars are time in. So how much mat time do you have? He doesn't believe, you know, you can get a black belt in four years, typically. Yeah. Um, Now, if you're training twice a day, seven days a week, maybe, you know, but in general, like probably not really a thing. So, but mat time. So how much time do you have in? Uh, The second one is how well do you compete? 
the third, stick with me here. (laughs) Okay. So he's telling this story about the, the pillars at camp. And, um, this guy was like, Oh, well, I'm never getting my purple belt. Like just some random guy just, you know, he's like, well, fine. I'm never getting my purple belt then. And Jim's like, wait, stick with me. Let me, cause he, the guy was refusing to compete. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's like, just stick with me. Let me explain the other two. The other two are how well do you roll with your peers? just in class, and then your overall knowledge of the technique. Now, the thing is, if any one of those is weak, then the other three have to be stronger. And competition is usually the one that's either the weakest or the strongest. Mm -hmm. So there are guys that, you know, just are amazing competitors. Maybe they came from wrestling or something like that, and they are going out and just beating everybody. And James has always been very firm that just because you win worlds doesn't mean you need your next belt. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, Just because you were the best at that tournament doesn't mean it's time for your next belt. He still goes by the other pillars. Okay. And then there's people who suck at competition or (laughs) don't compete at all. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you are going to have to take more time. You're going to have to know the techniques better. You know, like, so I was telling a guy, he came up to me and he was like, I absolutely love the pillars. Um, I don't think that I'm going to get my coach to be able to like (laughs) adopt them. He's like, so how do I, you know, he was actually trying to get me to tell him how to get his coach to adopt the pillars. Mm -hmm. And I was like, here's the thing. You're a blue belt. You can't tell your coach how to do promotions. (laughs) That's not how that works at all. Um, But you can evaluate yourself on those, you know, uh, take it as a hundred. And are you... Not that everything would be 25, 25, 25, 25, but do your numbers even add to 100? So kind of looking at it that way to Mm -hmm. where, you know, if you're only adding up to 70, well, something's got to increase. Like you've got to get better at something. And so then the second two pillars are continual improvement and moral compass. And, you know, James believes that you should be continuing to better yourself in all aspects of your life. Um, not just jujitsu, but, you know, like, are you getting better as a person? Because that's mm-hmm. part of what martial arts is about. And we don't really want anyone to be, you know, flying our flag. That's a bad person. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so moral <laughs> compass is very important. So those are kind of the pillars he goes by. And so the first thing I'm asking people, like if they're jealous, mm-hmm. it really is jealousy. You don't oh, want to totally. say that. You don't mm-hmm. want to say that. You don't want to admit to that. But it mm-hmm. is jealousy. Yeah. Is, you know, like, where do you feel like you are with the pillars? And so like James and I actually had this conversation just yesterday about me Mm -hmm. because there are a few people that I've, you know, were, they got their purple belts after I got my purple and, um, they're higher rank than me now. Mm -hmm. Uh, some brown belts, some, um, just more stripes than me. And I'm not jealous. I just want to, I want to be able to talk about like, where am I? Right. Like, um, you know, I want to, I want to look at it and evaluate it. So we went through every pillar, you know, like <laughs> I was like, I don't feel like we have to do moral compass or continuing improvement, but you know, like, I feel like we're pretty strong there. Um, but you know, just really evaluating for yourself mm-hmm. and you know, if your coach wants to talk about that, like look at those things and see where you are and see where you can improve. So that, that standpoint's good. I think another time of that, like comparison being the thief of joy is very strong at blue belt level. Really? So, so I've got something to look forward to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So two things, one, I don't know if you've seen all the memes, but they joke about like, when you get your blue belt, you ghost. Yeah. Right. Quit, quit a blue belt. And I personally think that happens for two reasons. One, because people make blue belt the goal. Ah. And I've heard like many people that um, were just like, well, you know, my goal was to get a blue belt. And then see from there. Yeah. So that was that was the goal rather than the goal just being jujitsu. Yeah. Get better, train, make friends, whatever. And then the other side of that is aside from black belt, because black belt is you can be a black belt for a day or for 40 years like a navel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So you can be a black belt a really long time. But at blue belt, I think there's the biggest gap. Like the biggest gap from that, like, I just got my blue belt to that blue belt over there has been doing, it has been a blue belt for three or four years. And so you compare yourself and you're like, oh, I'm not as good as them. 
Yeah. So I obviously don't deserve this rank. Uh, and then that makes people want to quit. Mm-hmm. So I just, it's tough, but you really have to stay in your own circle about it. There was a thing at, uh, I went to Girl Live and they did this, they, ha- they gave us all ropes and we put the rope around our feet <laughs> and stood in the, the center of the circle, basically. Uh-huh. And we were like, anything outside of this rope is none of my freaking business. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. And um, <laughs> Rister was like, I don't know if I like that because, you know, like you are my business. Like I'm got you uh-huh. know, but like the <laughs> overall aspect of it, like, you yeah. know, makes a lot of sense. Truly. Yes. It's what I'm doing. We're all on different paths. We're all going to progress differently. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect that one, your coach is going to promote in the same manner as another coach. Mm -hmm. And two, that that you're going to progress at the same level as any other person on the mat. Yeah. It's just going to be different. So the only way that you can really evaluate is to look at every aspect. And like, when you come in, are you drilling? Or are you talking? Mm-hmm. Like, are you rolling with purpose? Do you have a game plan? Like, you you really just have to work on evaluating yourself. A lot of my game plan is still just don't die. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> don't you feel like you're improving at that? Yeah. Like, I yeah. feel like I can go a little bit longer. Yeah. I, that's one of the things that I've noticed, like, just since November. Like, yeah. Oh, like I rolled you know, got two rolls in and I didn't die. Like yeah. I didn't start to die until the third until one. The third one. So yeah. there's progress. <laughs> That's good. That's real progress. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, one thing to make sure you're never doing is questioning your coach mm-hmm. as in like, why don't I have that many stripes or why, do, how come they got a stripe and I didn't, or, you know, what makes them better than me? Why did they get promoted? So don't question your coach, but it, it, I think it is okay to go to your coach and say, what do I need to work on? Yeah. I feel like that's a much better way to raise that question. Such a better way. Yeah. <laughs> and there's always been a thing. I don't know if it's like everywhere wide, but basically like if you mentioned getting promoted that it like put on, it tacked on more time. Like, <laughs> it's like, well, if you're going to bring it up. Then yeah. you better just plan to wait another six months. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, so don't bring it up just in case that's a thing at your school. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I think it's always a good thing to ask, what would you like to see me working on? How do you feel like I can improve instead of questioning? That's just, that's not good. Uh, friends, that's an off the mat tip too. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> We're just getting that one in early. Yeah. I like it. Just get it in early. <laughs> I think sometimes social media doesn't help with the whole comparison. So that, uh, I mean, th- back to an off the mat tip, right? Cause yeah. that doesn't help for all aspects of life. Right. Same thing. Yeah. Right. Like people say that they're you know, there's a lot of depression and anxiety because you see all of your friends doing these amazing things and having these amazing relationships, but you don't know what's really Mm -hmm. going on behind closed doors. Um, Which is also a good point of like, everyone has their own cross to bear, right? We don't know what struggles people are going through. Yeah. I saw this post yesterday that was people's pictures that they had posted on social media hours before They attempted suicide. Oh my gosh. And, you know, they look happy and they look, you know, like, and that there just wasn't, there wasn't always honesty in that picture. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. Like you may see these amazing lives on social media, whether it's on the mat or off the mat. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going through struggles. Yeah. So keep that in mind for yourself. And for that person. Like, exactly. Give them both some grace. Yes. That's good advice. Yeah. No, I think that was a self-care Sunday podcast. I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, grace is very important. We will link to that in the show notes. Good. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it may help or, or there may be some benefit in age with this too. Do you feel like you're less likely to compare yourself to others as you grow older? I think maybe a little bit because I think after you hit 40 or at least after I did, like you really stop caring a lot less about what people think. There's 
like I'm probably worse on myself right. about what I think with comparison. Right. Like, I've been doing this for six months and, you know, I still suck. I'm always going to suck at jujitsu. I mean, that's that's just yeah. jujitsu. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like we're all always I don't care how far you are. I think right. people continue to always learn something. There's Absolutely. always there's always going to be room for improvement. Right. You know, it's not like Mario Brothers where like you, <laughs> you get just to the end, <laughs> you know, you won. <laughs> yeah. Like that's never going to happen. <laughs> um, and I feel like just having that realization. And then I did have a come to Jesus with Beth, my wife, one night after I got home. And I was like, ah, this sucks. Nah, I'm going to quit. And nah. She's like, um, okay, why did you start doing this? Right. What benefits have you seen? Yeah. She's like, and honey, you're not particularly athletic. So the fact that you are even doing this. Yeah. Is amazing. Right. So like kind of being realistic and like yeah. knowing what your goals and actual aspirations are. Right. So I don't have any, I'm like, if I get a higher belt at some point down the road, then that's great. But I know that ultimately I feel better than I ever have. I'm probably stronger than I've ever been in my life. And all those are wins. Yeah. So I just need to keep showing up yeah. for that. Absolutely. And you know, cheer my teammates on when they get promoted. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, let, let's point out that technically I was a white belt for 13 years. So 13. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was a blue for four and a half. So when I'm 60, you're saying. <laughs> right. Exactly. You just, you just, you know, let go and let coach. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> you just, you just accept it. Okay. So let's wrap this up. Okay. Well, we already have the off the mat tip. Yes. Our on the mat tip is just be happy for others. That's a great on the mat tip. Yeah. Just celebrate, celebrate their wins and just be happy for them and don't compare yourself to them. Okay. There you have it. We have a Facebook group now. We do. It's called Beauty and the Gee Gang. Yes. Join us there. We will continue the conversations. We will celebrate promotions. We will not be jealous. That's right. Absolutely. We will applaud for each other. It is a very happy place on the interwebs. Yes. Join us. And you can also connect with us on Instagram. You can find me there at Brassy Broad Jen. And I'm AJ Klingerman. And together we're Beauty and the Gee podcast. And you can also, if you are a Twitter or tweeter or <laughs> you can also find us on Twitter at Beauty and the Gee. That's it. Oh, you know what else we want you to do, though? One more thing. One more thing? One more thing. What? We want you to, well, okay, two more things. Two more. Well, two we're more. asking a lot. We're very demanding today. Exactly. I want to make sure that you have subscribed to this podcast so that you do not miss any upcoming episodes because they are going to be really good. Yeah, they are. And the second thing, if you know somebody that has maybe suffered from a little joy thievery <laughs> share this episode with them and make sure that they listen to it thanks for listening and we will see you on the mat all right yeah. i'm still recording i'll just i'll just uh wrap <laughs> okay. Keep going. oh my god are we still recording yeah. you, could, you could find all kinds of funny stuff when you get back <laughs> I'm guessing that's one of our interviews for Role Model Camp showing up. Hmm. I'm trying to think of something entertaining to say, but I'm really bad on the spot. I was not entertaining while you left. You weren't? No, I tried. Like, I'm going to come back and like, there's going to be gonna nothing. Be boring. It's just going to be me going, well, I'm trying to be entertaining, but I'm not. <laughs> I need someone to play off of, apparently. Then I thought about singing, but then I was afraid to make the podcast and lose <laughs> subscribers. So oh, yeah, that's probably, that's probably a smart thing to think about. Yeah, I'm not trying to lose subscribers here. <laughs>